Many people are, are people are telling you how you should approach faith at Thanksgiving dinner, and it could either go really right or really wrong. Joining us now at the big screen is Church Milton's own Simon Rave to talk about the polite approach to dealing with your less agreeable relatives during the upcoming holiday evening. Thank you, Hunter. Many of the right-wing influences are going to tell you to get brazen with your family. Otherwise, you're not a good Catholic. And this just simply isn't the case. Welcome to The Daily Beat. I'm your host, Simon Rafe. A quick reminder, we'll be answering questions live a little later in The Daily Beat as our hosts are monitoring those chats right now. Also, we'll be checking in on today's social media beats a little later. It's Thanksgiving week in America, which means a few things. Let's go through them one by one. Host and hostesses everywhere are scrambling to find enough chairs and matching water goblets for the hordes of families that are about to descend. Grocery stores are filled with people buying a turkey the size of a medium velociraptor, which they hope will be able to feed six. It will, trust me. Or they are straight up brawling in the butterball aisle over the last scrawny bird because they left it until Wednesday. Fire departments from the 49th parallel down to the Rio Grande and from sea to shining sea are joyfully donning every single piece of protective equipment they own and gearing up to drop a deep frozen turkey into 15 gallons of boiling oil. It's bubbling atop a propane stove so rickety even Rube Goldberg would consider it dangerous. They are eagerly awaiting a cautionary conflagration designed to terrify housewives and give Red Adair a smile in wherever his eternal destiny led him. Credit cards are being polished ahead of Black Friday, an orgy, a capitalist acquisition, and every news outlet is waiting and even praying for some kind of dramatic violence over a 99-inch flat-screen TV and the local Walmart. Catholics are getting ready for the annual indult of Pius XII Twitter wars. Elon, if you're watching, it's going to be brutal. And families are going to sit around a table, and a lot of them are going to get into nasty arguments and go away having upset everyone from grandma to the toddlers and think that that makes them a good Catholic. Let's take these one at a time. One, mismatch place settings totally work provided you lean into it. Own the eclectic. Two, get your turkey now and allow between one and one and a half pounds per person. Start defrosting it now. Three, if you're going to fry it, defrost it like Al Gore's nightmares and dry it like the Sahara. Four, Shop online and buy from our store. Support us, there's no violence, no lingering guilt. There is no indult, it's a fiction. Make some extra sacrifice if you wish to eat leftovers. And stop thinking that because you brought up politics or religion and you were strident or you made someone cry or got disinvited from next year, you are being a good Catholic. The American notion of Thanksgiving is one whose core is shared among virtually every civilization. It's a harvest festival held during the autumn when the crops are gathered in. The United States ties it to the first colonists in New England when they were saved from starvation by a good crop and bundles it up with a lot of patriotic fervor and manifest destiny, identity. But ultimately, it's a harvest festival. We are thankful for crops, we are thankful for food, we are thankful for enough to get us through the winter. I'm sure a lot of you are nodding, but also reminding me that the first Thanksgiving in America was, in fact, Catholic. It was a mass of Thanksgiving. That is literally what Eucharistic means, of course. And it was earlier than the pilgrims in the Northeast, and it was held in Florida. Very true, and a great little tidbit to bring up when talking about Thanksgiving with your family this year. But ultimately, Thanksgiving is about giving thanks. It's right there in the name. You know what it's not about? Getting into pointless arguments about politics or religion. Calling people out for their faults and failings. God knows they have them and so do you. You know they have them and they know you have them. You call someone out and they're going to call you out for slights real or imagined, for failings genuine or merely perceived. You'll be two scoops deep into the mashed potatoes and half the table will be screaming and half will be sullen and silent. Invited guests will be embarrassed and wondering if they want to marry into this crazy bunch at all. Kids will be crying, mothers will be begging for peace. And the people who started it will go away with a self-satisfied smug smirk and a feeling they are good Catholics. They think they did the right thing, and they evangelized, and they stood up for Christ and the church. No, you didn't. You were just a jerk. Saying something provocative, something deliberately offensive, something negative, by which I mean something that can be summed up as thou shalt not, at a family dinner is going to be counterproductive. It always will be. It just gets people's backs up, it makes them defensive, it gets them to scream at you. You scream, I scream, we all scream, and no one wants whipped cream on their pie. Too many Catholics today have got into their heads that being contrary, being provocative, being insulting or offensive is somehow promoting the kingdom. Yes, 
we need to call out sin, but have a thought about how you're going to do it. It's Thanksgiving. Have you thought of saying what you are thankful for? Because that's the central message. The gospel of Christ isn't, thou shalt not use contraception or commit adultery or have an abortion. The gospel of Christ is positive. It's, thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind and with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. The gospel says you don't need to go to hell for your sins. And remember, you know they've got them and they know you've got them. So this Thanksgiving, try a different evangelization approach. Don't call people out for their sins. Say what you're thankful for, for the companionship of your family, that you can get together, that you have food, that you are saved by the atoning sacrifice of Christ, that your sins are washed away in the blood of the Lamb by confession and the Eucharist. Be thankful for your Catholic faith. Might that upset someone? Sure, it might. But if it does, you can respond, I am just saying I am thankful Christ has forgiven my sins and thankful that he can forgive yours and anyone else's if they just ask. That is a positive message. It won't probably start a screaming match. And it has every chance of turning into when people are nibbling the last pieces of pecan pie and watching the lions lose, it can turn into a quiet conversation between you and someone who needs to hear it. And that's where evangelization happens. It's not dramatic, it's not sound of fury, but it's slow and it's gentle and it's beautiful. It's a seed being planted at harvest. And if that's not beautiful, I don't know what is. Simon, that's a wonderful message, but I have to return to the beginning of what you said mm -hmm. about the, uh, the Pius XII indult. Can you, can you explain that? <laughs> yes, so there is this story that has been circulating around for uh, years, at least as long as the internet's been a thing, probably longer, that Pius XII created an indult for American Catholics to forgo the uh, abstaining from meat on the Friday after Thanksgiving. And this has been shared, and it's tweeted around, and I've looked into it, loads of people have looked into it. You can see there's no evidence that it was ever actually a thing from Pius XII. It was never actually a thing. It's just one of these apocryphal mythological things. Now, if you do wish to eat your Thanksgiving leftovers and so forth like that, obviously there are various options rather than abstaining from uh, meat on a Friday. That's, that's one of the options. But of course, you know, especially if you've got friends over, it's like, do we want to cook again? And we've got you know, a metric ton of turkey left over. Well, you know, do we want to do that? Obviously, you can make some sort of other sacrifice. For example, you could say a rosary, you could go make some sort of volunteer thing, some sort of uh, sacrifice mm -hmm. that you could do there. But there is no specific indult. All right, now we'll shift to our social media beats where we'll take a look at what's happening on the internet. Here is one from good old Charlie Kirk. And he says, the people who from years lectured us, just build your own Twitter. That's how I imagine them talking. Just build your own Twitter. <laughs> uh, turn out to be incapable of even leaving Twitter. I don't think he's talking about the workers. I think he's talking about people who are announcing, I'm leaving Twitter. And then six tweets later, they're still there. Yeah, many of these people don't have any integrity. I mean, they say things but don't mean them. They do things uh, but then contradict the actions with different words. Uh, and I have to imagine that someone who lacks integrity is an unhappy person. I mean, their body and soul are com always at odds or at war with each other, and that's not a recipe for, for peace and joy. I, yeah. I, think, uh, I think CBS was it tried to, or said they were going to get off Twitter, and then two days later they got back on, probably yeah. because they saw their engagement just tank. And yeah. the, the Speaking of CBS, tank. they just recently said, oh, by the way, the Hunter Biden laptop story is actually true. Yeah. Yeah. Just by the way. <laughs> and I'm still, just now. I'm still waiting for the celebrities to leave after Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. Trump. When he's the country. I'm still waiting for them to leave. It's, please, it's, please. It's just fine. <laughs> yeah, no integrity among a lot of these people. If you, if you say you're going to do something, do it. Uh, so let's uh, talk about the chief tweet himself, Elon Musk. He says, my firstborn child died in my arms. I felt his last heartbeat. I have no mercy for anyone who would use the deaths of children for gain, politics or fame. Obviously, uh, that tweet is about, I think, Alex Jones yeah, yeah. and his reinstatement on the platform. Obviously, first off, very sad, you know, we pray for yeah. Elon Musk's child, but um, Elon Musk positioning himself as kind of this free speech absolutist and advocate, and he's really, this seems very much like Elon's feelings about this are influencing yeah. it rather than something else. Yeah, so. I think this is something that people fail to see a lot is you're never going to have the, it's like the same with the church, you're never going to have a perfect 
social media platform where as long as a yeah. human is in charge. Like yeah. this is a perfect example of it. His own personal experience is really shaping how he views that and who he's going to let on the platform. So that's a good point. Yeah. No, yeah, obviously Elon Musk uh, is, is human. I think that's probably breaking. <laughs> I think a lot of people. Great commentary. But obviously we see a very, a very human emotion there. So obviously, yes. like I said, we do pray for Elon and his family. Uh, a tweet from uh, Carrie Lake. Uh, Governor select Katie Hobbs didn't debate, didn't campaign, insulted our Latino community at a Hispanic forum, did not show up to work as Secretary of State, did not recuse herself from overseeing her own election, and is a twice convicted racist. Here's the uh, here's the thing, though, all those things are true, but it doesn't matter. She won. Uh, the left knows how to weaponize uh, mail-in balloting and ballot harvesting. The right doesn't know how to do it. It's a world completely foreign to conservatives. And until we uh, own up and learn how to maneuver on this new board, they're going to continue winning no matter if she's a racist, no matter if all of those things that Carrie Lake yeah. just made. All those things are true, but somehow she was able to get you know just enough votes just enough to votes. Uh, yeah. beat Carrie Lake. I mm -hmm. think they, 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 they ran out of ink in Maricopa County. Nothing could be printed. Yeah. Uh, we've got a tweet here from Trad West. No relation to Kanye West, I think, but uh, uh, really, uh, this is a great tweet. I actually love it. Um, there's a very sad-looking man there. says, I failed you. I've fallen to temptation again and again. I'm not worthy of you of your forgiveness. And obviously there's this Jesus wearing the crown of thorns. And he says, I forgive you, son. Walk with me and sin no more. I mean, that's, that's just beautiful. I don't even want to spoil that with words. Yeah, yeah, no, I yeah. agree. Absolutely lovely, just beautiful that. Anyway, as a reminder, all of this is free to you, but it's not free for us to produce for you. If you like what you see in here, you can give us a call on 248-545-5716, or you can go to our donate link at churchmilton.com forward slash FFF. All right, now it's time for your questions. Guys, who's first? It is me, Simon. As we know, and as of course you know, Thanksgiving is soon. First and people are asking how to best cook a turkey. <laughs> is there a one best well, there are many different ways. Here are just some things that I would say. First, um, make sure that your turkey is fully defrosted. So okay. a turkey will take Step about one, uh, yeah, it'll take about a day per four pounds if you do it in the fridge, or it will take about 30 minutes if you do it in cold water. Now, okay. you do not want to leave your turkey out to defrost just on the counter or something. That causes all kinds of problems. It doesn't just dissolve, uh, defrost evenly. What you also want to do is you want to make sure that when you've got your turkey defrosted, you want to take out the guts that are inside it. A lot of them have giblets in, and you want to weigh the turkey at that point. It's mm -hmm. going to lose a lot of weight. You do your calculations on cooking based on that. Generally speaking, it's about 15 minutes a pound. Okay. Don't stuff the turkey with the dressing. That's not good. You're just going to waste it. Instead, what you want to do is get some uh, nice, moist, aromatic things. Onions and apples are very good. Maybe some herbs, whatever you like. Some Put herbs. those in. Herbs with an H, yep. Or herbs, whatever you want to call them. Put those in the cavity as you cook it. The stuffing, if you have it inside, just isn't going to cook properly. It's just going to be a waste. But those kind of vegetables will give a nice lot of moisture and flavor. That's the big problem with turkeys. They often So dry. step one, defrost. Step two. Step two, you know, uh, weigh it after you've okay. defrosted it. Key point. Got yeah, it. And make sure that you do defrost it because that is just, that is salmonella waiting to happen. You will all be ill on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, is step three wrapping in bacon or no? Step three is wrapping <laughs> up bacon. <laughs> that's what I wanted to hear. That's, that's what I do. Uh, you know, look, people have my email and stuff. If they want to email me for recipes and stuff, I'm happy. I've been <laughs> tweeting a bunch of recipes, actually. If people follow me on Twitter. Oh. Uh, I've been tweeting a bunch of Thanksgiving recipes, and I, I will take the emails and stuff. All right. It's okay. What what about the first Thanksgiving? Can you talk more about that? Yes. Well, it's actually, um, I, I can talk more about it, and very briefly I will. But if you search on our website for Thanksgiving, we got a bunch of articles about this, including a beautiful one by Christine, uh, Christine Niles that she did. But ultimately, what it is, obviously, we think of Thanksgiving, and it's this very kind of Puritan thing. It's the little hats, it's the ruffles, it's the little shiny buckles, you know. And that's not what was happening at all. The first Thanksgiving, as I said, was a mass of Thanksgiving uh, when they first came and landed in the New World. Uh, there, they landed in the New World, and they celebrated this mass of Thanksgiving down there in Florida. And that was in the 15th hundreds. Mm. So that was very early on. There's also a case to be made that kind of the first Thanksgiving, this uh, conscious offering of thanks was actually made uh, when settlers from Mexico came up into the place they then called New Mexico. Uh, and they were actually having uh, a specific mass of Thanksgiving again. Uh, you know, 
Catholic and associated with a Marian feast at that point. So really, I think that's a very important thing to realize. And obviously, when we celebrate Thanksgiving, a lot of the aesthetics of it is, as I say, it's the Puritans. And the Puritans were really very anti-Catholic people, both in terms of their politics. Uh, we have to remember that in really, in many cases, anti-Catholicism is the last acceptable prejudice in the United States. Uh, you know, but uh, they were very anti-Catholic in their politics, but also in their theology. Their theology was incredibly anti-Catholic, and it's influenced um, you know, uh, thought throughout uh, the United States is this whole issue of Americanism where uh, Catholics kind of gave up their political, uh, gave up their religious identity for a seat at the political table. But we should be celebrating Thanksgiving and we should be celebrating it in a Catholic way, thinking about offering thanks for all the things that we have. And of course, the first thing we have is our Catholic faith. Simon, another question here. Uh, should Catholics participate in Black Friday? Yeah, okay, so, so this is an interesting one. This actually kind of came up in the rehearsal. I think Hunter asked, uh, you know, why, uh, why is it called Black Friday? Uh, and it's called Black Friday because this is the day of the year, supposedly when uh, businesses, particularly retail businesses, get into the black. That means, you know, you would write your accounts out and any negatives would be in red and any positives would be in black. And so it's the idea that only at that point, when there was a great number of sales made, would you get into the black. And that's not mm. really accurate in any way, shape, or form. But traditionally, Black Friday is a big shopping day in the United States. There's lots yeah. of sales. We have a sale right now. If you go to our website and you look at the One True Faith, we've actually got a sale, 50% off all the One True Faith on DVD. So everyone's kind of doing these uh, sort of sales. Now, should Catholics be participating in this? Absolutely, yes. Capitalism is a wonderful thing that has lifted more people out of poverty than uh, almost anything else. What we shouldn't be doing, however, we shouldn't be spending money that we don't have. We shouldn't be engaging in this orgy of consumption. We shouldn't be trying to fill a void in our heart that can only be filled uh, by God with consumption and consumerism. Yeah. Uh, we should obviously be making sure that we're buying things that are appropriate, uh, you know, at this point. Uh, and... If we are going to Black Friday, and of course there's all those, you know, the jostling and the sales and everything, we should be behaving in a manner of charity and love. So absolutely, no, there's nothing wrong with buying stuff, just be Catholic about it. Yeah. All right, guys, let's go to the venerable Fulton Sheen for our final beat. Judge the Catholic Church not by those who barely live by its spirit, but by those but by the example of those who live closest to it. I mean, and that is absolutely beautiful there. Yeah, don't be judging the Catholic Church by the bad examples. Judge the Catholic Church by those who are living closest to it. Remember, you're, if you want to say I'm judging the church, you've got to judge the very principles, the doctrines, the ideals of the church. If you want to say I'm judging Catholics, I'm judging Christians, I'm judging individuals, well, okay, you can judge them by what they do, but of course there is that wonderful phrase, do not judge lest you be judged. Somebody will come back and judge it on you as well. All right, anyway, that's it for today's show. Thank you very much for having me, guys. Sending it back over to you.